Hey everybody, it's Mike and welcome to Chip Damage. And today is a very special day. And that is because tonight at midnight, Godzilla vs. Kong is premiering in North America and I could not be more excited. I have been a Godzilla fan literally my entire life, so you know who I'm rooting for in this movie. Some of my earliest memories are sitting in front of the TV for hours and watching old Godzilla movies on the Sci-Fi Channel. And I've carried that love of the franchise throughout my entire life. And Within those years, I've gathered quite an odd collection of Godzilla items, uh, ranging from video games, movies, and toys, and that's what I want to talk about today. Some of the rare and weirder items that I've been able to gather over the years and show them off to you as a uh, celebration of the renaissance that Godzilla is kind of going through now. So please join me on this journey as I dive into this very odd and beloved collection of mine. And please consider subscribing if you like what you see here. But without any further ado, let's get started. And let's get started with what you see right in front of you. And that is the SH Figure Arts SH Monster Arts release of, forgive me, of Destroya. Yes. Um, Bandai Namco, uh, the owners of the SH Figure Arts line, also have an exclusive Godzilla line known as SH Monster Arts. And one of the releases that I picked up from this line is the legendary Destroya, as you can see here. Um, as with their SH Figure Arts line, famous for their anime releases and action figure releases, these monsters are very articulated. Um, all the joints are movable, the wings are poseable, and I want to destroy it because he is uh, among the newer enemies of Godzilla, one of the most iconic ones. He gives Godzilla the toughest fight, and in his film, well, spoiler, so if you haven't seen this movie from 1995, he's the monster that causes Godzilla to die in his movie. So he's kind of legendary in that regard. And man, he's just cool looking, very demonic. And they really nailed it with the look on this figure. If you can get a good look at that, the ridges on the tail, the back, the wings, just a great monster, great figure. SH Monster Arts release of Destroy, I love it. While on the subject of figures, the company NECA, very well known for doing their retro releases of characters like the Aliens, the Predators, Robocop, and Batman, they've also done a bunch of Godzilla releases. Um, they've actually done a release of Godzilla from every single one of his movie releases. So there's a original black and white Godzilla, there's a Godzilla Destroy All Monsters Godzilla, so on and so forth throughout the years. The ones I chose to pick up are these two. Godzilla 1985 as it's known in North America and the Godzilla vs. Biolante version. There's a couple of reasons I wanted these two. Number one, fantastic box art on both of them. Uh, 1985 is shown here. Um, and you, I love the design of the Heisei or the 80s Godzilla uh, shown here. So this is just one I really wanted to pick up. And Biolante over here is my favorite Godzilla cover. Like th this art is just legendary. Most of the Godzilla poster and movie arts are fantastic. But Biolante has always had a special place in my heart. This movie came out the year I was born. Uh, as I was a little kid, it was being advertised everywhere. And I love, I love the Godzilla in this movie, the way he looks, kind of like the pantherish head, the ridged head, like this. This is one of my favorite Godzilla's um, designs ever. So yeah, this one I needed to have. And NECA does a really good job. I keep them in the box, as you see here. I occasionally take them out, but um, there are dozens of these. These are the two that I wanted, and these don't go for a ton. Unfortunately, the line is over. It, uh, they did complete the line, so. You, but you should be able to still get some of these if you're interested. And I strongly suggest that you do because these are just fantastic and a great way to show your love for the series and the, a particular movie in that series if you want that particular Godzilla. And sticking with toys is one little bonus and that is the Venomates Fire Rodan release, the Comic-Con release. Um, there were 250 of these released at conventions around North America. And I wanted this, uh, it's a silly little toy, but I love Rodan. I, I know this is gonna come as a shock, but Rodan may be my favorite Godzilla character other than Godzilla himself. I'm just, you know, he's he's scrappy, he can fly, he's a pterodactyl, and you know what, I love dinosaurs, so Rodan has always been a favorite of mine. So when I saw that they were making a Rodan figure, an exclusive, particularly Fire Rodan from 1993's Godzilla versus Mecha Godzilla. It's kind of a, a deep cut. I wanted this, so I picked up this little figure. And hey, there's only 250 of them, and I'm a happy owner of one of them. But uh, moving on to movies, uh, we're going to look at one of the first uh, videotapes I ever owned, and that is the VHS of Godzilla versus Biolante. Like I said, as a quick overview, this came out the year I was born. When I was getting a few years later in age, I caught this movie on the Sci-Fi Channel, or HBO, I believe, and I needed this movie. My parents bought me this as a gift, and it's something I've held on to for 25 years. So, yeah, very near and dear to the heart. Just wanted to bring it up. 
But if you want to get something more modern, uh, Godzilla has something of an odd set of releases in North America and around the world, anywhere outside of Japan, it can be kind of hard to get a concise collection of Godzilla movies. What's very common is for them to do double releases of the older movies, like this set here that you see, a Blu-ray of Godzilla Tokyo SOS and Godzilla Final Wars, uh, movies from 2003 and 2004. Great ones, by the way. I love Final Wars in particular. It's basically Godzilla jacked up to 11. Like, Godzilla's always silly. Final Wars in particular is just like Dragon Ball Z levels of ridiculousness, and I love it. But these are common. This is uh, when you buy most Godzilla movies in a store. If you go out, you're going to see double packs like these. Mm, there's no huge collection of all the later day movies like this. But these are cool nonetheless. So yeah, um, you can go out and find these. These are not too hard to come by. Um, and moving along, I needed to say that yet again, another release of Godzilla vs. Violante on Blu-ray. This was a single release, oddly. It's one of the few single releases. But like I said, this is my favorite older Godzilla movie. You needed to have it, Godzilla vs. Violante on Blu-ray. And moving even farther into the future, just the regular releases of the Godzilla 2014 movie and the Godzilla King of the Monsters movie. Not much to say here, but I do want to comment on these movies. These are slightly divisive. Godzilla 2014, you see Godzilla in this for like 11 minutes, but I don't mind that. Those 11 minutes are fantastic. I love the design. It looks like Godzilla fused with a, a Komodo dragon. Um, it's a different take. You know, the atomic breath was a little wispy in this movie, and the Mudos weren't great villains. But hey, I had fun. It was uh, the first time in a decade that I had seen Godzilla on the big screen. And as an American uh, Godzilla movie, this was much better than the TriStar one that came out in 1998. So I, I can't really complain with this one. It's a good start. King of the Monsters. This was derided. Uh, this came out two years ago, and some Godzilla fans love it, some Godzilla fans hate it, and the general public just seems to hate it in general. However, I love this movie. This brought together the core four. This brought together Godzilla, King Ghidorah, Mothra, and Rodan, and I think all of their designs are fantastic. Yes, the fights are a little hard to see, the human characters are all idiots, but... <laughs> the human characters in Godzilla. I can't name more than two of them from any of the prior Godzilla films. Like that's not why I watch these movies. I go for the monsters. Those are the characters I want to see. I think they were characterized fantastically. Sure, I would love to see them. But hey, they play the classic Godzilla theme in this in the middle of the at a high part of the movie. That brought a tear to my eye. Everyone in the theater I saw this with was clapping at certain parts and I think they made the other monsters, particularly Rodan and Ghidorah look amazing. Just wanted to comment on, the, uh, comment on this movie because it gets a lot of hate, but you know what? Me, I love this and I'm not going to argue anymore. I, I continually rewatch this regularly. So, uh, And across the sea in Godzilla's homeland, of course, we have the release of Shin Godzilla in this very cool looking black bordered red box um, Blu-ray release of Shin Godzilla made by Hideaki Anno, the director of Evangelion and Nadia Blue Water, uh, fantastic anime director. What an honor it was for him, I'm sure, to go and make a movie on one of Japan's biggest icons, Shin Godzilla, or Godzilla, uh, his, uh, his film Shin Godzilla, which I love. It's a slower place Godzilla. It has a more horror-based theme. Godzilla is more of like a massive walking mound of tumors rather than a dinosaur in this, but I loved it. Um, I saw it in theaters in a limited release here. Had a lot of fun. I don't think they're ever going to do anything, a sequel with this Godzilla. I think this was a one and done, but hey, I enjoyed it. It was a cool, scary take on Godzilla and I just wanted to talk about it. All right, going on to the more rare and expensive releases uh, for Godzilla in the United States is the Godzilla DVD collection. Yes. Yeah, so what this is, is a multi-disc release of Godzilla, uh, and some of his older films. So of course it has the classic God's, uh, Gojira, got a Japanese version of the first film, as well as King of the Monsters, as well as many of the better uh, Showa era films. Uh, looking here, Godzilla Raids Again, Mothra vs. Godzilla, Ghidorah the Three-Headed Monster, Invasion of Astro Monsters, so on and so forth. Um, it's, it's a good collection. This came out in 2011. These are unfortunately pretty hard to come by now. It is, however, missing Kong vs. Godzilla, which you'd think would come in this because that was such an iconic movie back in the day, but of course, licensing is always an issue, so, you know, that one movie is not in here. But if you are looking for a DVD collection of Godzilla, uh, this was the best way to get it for quite a while, until last year when this big boy was released. This is fantastic. So the um, film company Criterion, uh, the DVD, Blu-ray kind of 
masters of restoration and re-releasing Criterion. They did a Godzilla collection last year, and this thing is just amazing. What this is, is 15 Godzilla movies, all from the first era of Godzilla, from 54 to 75, the Showa era of Godzilla, as it is known. Um, all of his movies remastered. They look fantastic. Uh, there's the original Godzilla and the Godzilla King of the Monsters version, all the way to the terror of Mechagodzilla. And man, you know, this, this was really special. And just to show it off, like they, they, they have a uh, case that's like this giant book with all this amazing art um, representing each and every one of the movies. They give you a blurb and a bit of a history on each and every one of the movies. And it's just fantastic. I've watched this. The quality is fantastic. You can't get all these movies in another set like this, uh, in one set, anywhere else. Like this is the way to go. Um, so the asking price of this is a little high. It's $130, but hey, you know what? That's less than $10 a movie. And these are classics. Even the lesser Godzilla films deserve to watch. That's my favorite. Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla, my favorite show at everyone. I just love that art. And that's my favorite movie in this collection other than the original Godzilla. And at the very back here, you can see each one of the movies is displayed on a Blu-ray um, beautifully in this bookcase. I love this thing. I do fully suggest this for any Godzilla fan, any Kaiju fan, any film fan, really. Like, the original Godzilla in particular is a very important movie in cinema. I mean, hell, Godzilla's roar and Godzilla, Godzilla's theme are some of the most iconic sounds in film. And this is the best way to watch some of the greatest movies of all time, in my opinion, in the realm of fantasy. So please, check it out. That is the Godzilla Showa era Criterion Collection. You can still get these, get your hands on it, because I bet after Godzilla vs. Kong comes out, this is gonna be a sought after item. And as a bonus in the movie category, uh, last year they also released a Blu-ray re-release re of Mothra. Um, now Mothra, if you don't know, did not start out as a Godzilla character. She was a character in her own movie released in 63, I believe. And um, this movie's actually pretty good. This is the introduction of Mothra. It has like the little Mothra twin fairies, you know, on the island. She was an indigenous god. The whole Mothra lore starts here. And other versions of this movie are actually kind of hard to come by, whether it be on Blu-ray, DVD, or VHS. So this re-release with this lovely steelbook is a fantastic choice that you can still get. This just came out. It wasn't advertised well. So please, if you're interested in the second most famous kaiju um, in the Godzilla franchise, Mothra, Please check this out. It's well worth it. And moving on to the category of video games. Uh, and I love these, so please uh, forgive me for smiling too much while talking about them. We're going to be talking about the most obvious release that is Godzilla Destroy All Monsters Melee. Yes, this is a very famous game um, that was released in the sixth generation of consoles. Uh, originally on the GameCube. This is more well known as a GameCube, but it did get a release a year later on the original Xbox, and that's the version we're talking about today. So what is this, if you don't know? This is an arena fighter. Almost think of like a wrestling game, but with Kaiju. Uh, Godzilla and his most famous friends, you know, Ingiris, Rodan, Ghidorah, Mechagodzilla, and a host of others, Gigan, Megalon, the list goes on. You can get into a brawl with them in a multitude of cities from New York City, Tokyo, Los Angeles, in four-player rumble action, like an arena fighter. It, you're big, clunky, and slow. You have all your moves. Godzilla, of course, has his atomic breath, and there's tail whips. Certain characters can fly. It's a wacky good time. You can pick up buildings and throw them at each other. I spent hours playing these. Now, the Xbox version that I'm showing here is the version you want to get if, you're, if it's an option for you. The GameCube version is fantastic. However... The Xbox version had a bonus character. It had Kiryu, also known as Mechagodzilla 3, uh, a newer version of Mechagodzilla. So th this would be the better version. There's actually also DLC for this version. There was a, a bonus stage or two you could download back when the original Xbox servers were up. Um, unfortunately, you cannot get that anymore. I wish that would get some type of re-release, but I don't see that happening. But you still get Kiryu in this version, and hey, he's a cool character. So if the GameCube version and the Xbox version are both options for you, pick up the Xbox version, but the GameCube version is excellent as well. However, that game is good. You know what's even better? It's sequel, Godzilla Save the Earth. Yes, this did not come out in GameCube. This was a PS2 and Xbox release. And unfortunately, this game is going for quite a pretty penny now. It's breaking 100 bucks just about, and it's probably gonna go up as Godzilla goes up in popularity with the release of the new movie, as well as just time going by. But this is my favorite Godzilla game. It's very similar to the first one. 
Four-player Godzilla action in an arena that's a city, but there are more monsters in this. They added a playable Mothra. They added Space Godzilla, who if you play as, you're a jerk because Space Godzilla is essentially unbeatable in this game. Jet Jaguar, who's just... I can't believe Jet Jaguar is in this game and a host of other characters and stages. It's a it plays a little smoother. It looks a little better. Godzilla Save the Earth. I still hook up the OG Xbox to play this on occasion because this game is a lot of fun. Unfortunately, it is a lot of money, but if you have that type of disposable income, pick this up. You're going to have a lot of fun. And as a note, there was a third game in this series released called Godzilla Unleashed on the Wii and the PS2. That one isn't as good. That was kind of a downgrade from these two titles. Uh, that's still somewhat pricey, but I, I wouldn't suggest that one. I don't even own it because I just didn't have as much fun with that one. Um, if you have the choice, if you're looking for the best Godzilla game, I suggest Save the Earth. But if you, can uh, you don't want to drop the change, get, uh, get Destroy All Monsters Melee. It'll save you a few bucks. Either way, these games are excellent. I wish there were more Godzilla games because... After Unleashed, there was only one other Godzilla game released in North America, and that is the infamous Godzilla 2014 for the PlayStation 4. Yes, so this game is infamously pricey on the PlayStation 4. This is now reaching close to $200 because this game was delisted on the PlayStation Store due to licensing issues with Toho, and the physical copies just didn't have a lot of copies printed. There, there aren't a lot of these out in the wild. I picked this up back at launch, and no one was picking this up. No one was talking about this game. It came out a year after the Godzilla 2014 movie. There wasn't a lot of hype. The reviews were very poor, but hey, I'm a Godzilla fan and I wanted to play Godzilla in HD, so I picked this up. What do I have to say about it? Yeah, it can be pretty boring um, as a game. You control Godzilla more like a tank in this, and you know, there's infamous memes of like destroying generators in this game, but one thing it did get right was the Godzilla love. There's a lot of history uh, in this game you, like gives you full detail breakdowns on all the monsters and locations and films you can make little Godzilla dioramas that play out there's a lot of cool features to this that aren't the game like everything that isn't the gameplay in this game is actually pretty good so if you're a huge Godzilla fan I would suggest this uh, really not for anybody else because this is expensive and it's not a ton of fun but it's a great collectible it's a great kind of overview of Godzilla's history and as of right now it's the last big release of Godzilla in video game form of any kind in North America. So hey if you're interested you have some extra money pick it up Godzilla PS4. And I have one bonus item that doesn't fall into the category of game toy or movie but this is something that when I saw I had to have and that is my <laughs> Rodan Kentucky Straight Corn Whiskey. Yes so I'm not much of a drinker, but this is something I needed to have in my kitchen. Uh, in 2019, when Godzilla King of the Monsters was released, Japan released four different liquors uh, like this based on monsters. There was a Godzilla one, a Mothra one, King Ghidorah one, and a Rodan one. And they were not cheap. They were about 150 US dollars. Uh, so that's why I don't have all four of them. But like I said, Rodan is my favorite kaiju, and I just thought it would be funny to have Rodan whiskey sitting in the kitchen. Now, I haven't drank this yet. This is only for when I get married or when I have a kid. But um, I'm glad this is uh, on top of my fridge. And oh yes, it has got that official Godzilla licensing uh, logo right there to let you know this is a real Toho project. Yeah, you know, can't wait to get messed up with some Rodan whiskey in a couple of years. This is this is probably going to be some good stuff. Mm. And that kind of wraps up uh, some of the items I want in my Godzilla collection that I wanted to talk about today. Yes, it's a random assortment of items, but... I love Godzilla and whenever I see his face kind of plastered on something, I always just run out and buy it because you know what? I'm a G fan and we're a dedicated bunch. And I'm so happy that the series is going through a bit of a renaissance now with the recent s string of films, uh, Godzilla 2014, King of the Monsters, and now Godzilla vs. Kong. And regardless of who wins the fight in that movie, I'm going to enjoy it because I just love seeing the big G on screen because I'm a lifelong fan and I can't wait to see what's coming out next. So yeah, thank you for joining me for this today. And please let me know in the comments below your favorite Godzilla movies, your favorite Godzilla collectibles, and your favorite Godzilla memories if you've been a fan for a long time. And please consider subscribing so you can be in a community of Godzilla fans just like you and me. My name is Mike, this has been Chip Damage, and have a good night.